Okay, so today we're going to be making a, uh, a stew. It's a Persian stew called Khoresh Sib, and it means apple stew. And it's something that tastes really good in the fall because it's apple season and uh, everybody's you know, trying to have something nice and warm to fill their stomachs. And so I'm just gonna walk you through how you make that today. So um, just a real quick, a list of ingredients that you're gonna need. You're gonna need two uh, large onions. You're gonna need uh, two pounds of, we use chicken breast, but uh, you can use beef uh, or lamb. Um, you're gonna need olive oil. Uh, you're also going to need salt, pepper, you know, just for seasoning. You're going to need um, yellow split peas, which, um, I don't know, sometimes it's hard to find those in the grocery store, but that's what we use. Um, you're also going to need four apples. Um, right now, these are apples we picked from the orchard. You just got to, you know, core them, skin them, and then you can cut them into any shape you want. I mean, we're going to go with this, so they kind of go on top. This looks, you know, makes it look a little bit more like an apple. And, um, and then you're gonna need some tomato paste. Uh, you know, whatever. You only need a couple of tablespoons of that. You're gonna need some white vinegar, um, some sugar. Uh, what else do we need? And then um, if, you're really, if you really wanna get fancy, um, you know, you can, you can get yourself some saffron. I got this off of Amazon. Um, you know, you just basically, you take the threads, you grind them up, you put it in some boiling water, and then you use that solution in your food. And, oh, and then also, you're gonna need a little bit of ground turmeric. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, so, that's basically just to make it yellow. No, actually, it has some flavor to it. So, um, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna just uh, dice up your onions, and then, um, I've, I've got them cooking already on the stove, so I'm just cooking them on a low to medium heat, depending on your, your stove top. And you wanna get them to be like caramelized. I've got some here that I already uh, made in advance, so you can kinda see, they kinda look like that. Okay, so while the onions are um, caramelizing on the stove top, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dice up some of my chicken. Some people prefer the chicken to be really small, but I think uh, if you're cooking with chicken, it tends to dry out, so you're gonna wanna make sure you have it in like a good, a good size, so it doesn't just get dried up and lost into the, in the stew. How much, how much uh, chicken, you know what the ratio is, depends on, on your taste. My wife prefers to have um, it be more on the veggie side, which, eh. I mean, I know who's on the right side of history there. With that decision, you know, either way, maybe between a, a pound and two pounds for like a, if you're trying to make about four servings for a family of four. I'm a tough guy. Tough guys don't do man. Tough guys deep fried chicken for a living. Probably want to be between, you know, a pound and, and two pounds of meat. All right, so for the next step, what we're going to do is now we got the chicken all diced up. The onions are nicely uh, caramelized. Um, oh, and I do want to say, some people prefer to cook the chicken with the onions together at the same time, but uh, I like to really cook down the onions and give them like a nice, sweet, caramelized flavor before I add the meat in. Two seconds later. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to medium high. Um, I'm going to let that cook, basically until it pretty much gets close to cooking through. It's brown on all the sides. Um, oh, I did forget. There is one other really special ingredient that really makes this and cranks it up to like, you know, fall. Fall, fall, fall. Hiding back here. Ground cinnamon. Yummy! You're gonna need ground cinnamon. That is a critical component for this. So, um, while this chicken is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and give it some salt and pepper. You can do about a teaspoon of uh, salt and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So I'm just gonna eyeball it because, well, I'm just good like that and I made this dish about a million times. You know, don't be afraid to give it a good amount of salt because, you know, the chicken absorbs it really well and a lot of times people want to, you know, add salt afterwards. As far as the cinnamon goes, we're going to use about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And once again, this is another, I mean, this is like the special component of the dish, so, you know, I like to go heavy on it makes it really feel like it's fall. You know, what we're gonna do after that is essentially we're gonna let the chicken cook, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in a cup and a half of water. So I got a cup and a half of water, I'm just gonna go ahead and 
plop that in there. And you know, just make sure you stir it around so you get that salt, pepper, cinnamon working. Okay, so if you've never made uh, the saffron solution, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you know, grind up the saffron. It's kind of hard to see here, but you know, you just grind it up into this dust and you're gonna put some boiling water over it, maybe like a tablespoon or two. And then you just let that soak for about five minutes. Okay, we're gonna let the chicken simmer on medium, uh, medium low for about 45 minutes with the lid on. And then we'll come back and I'll get you started on the next step. In porno, we call this the money shot. All right, so it's been 45 minutes, the chicken's been cooking, and now it's time to add in our other ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting a, about a half a cup of the, the yellow split peas, um, the saffron solution that we just made, uh, about two tablespoons of tomato paste, three tablespoons of sugar, and three tablespoons of vinegar, which is gonna give it the sweet and the sour kind of tartness that we're looking for in this pot. Put all that in there and cook that for another 15 minutes or so. This is really not a, a super difficult dish to make, so you know, don't feel like all the ingredients and stuff throw you off. It's a really, really straightforward recipe. You know, you're gonna wanna tweak it to your preferences over time as you uh, cook it more and more. You'll learn which parts you like more of. So I'm gonna go ahead and simmer that I'm gonna turn it up to uh, medium low. And it's already smelling really, really good. Let's go ahead and set a timer for 15 minutes and then we'll be right back here for the next step. All right, so while we're waiting for the split peas to cook down uh, with the tomato paste and um, the other ingredients that we just added, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take those apple slices that we uh, cut up. We're gonna saute them in a little bit of ghee. Ghee. Ghee is uh, like a clarified butter, substitute for you know, either regular butter or oil. Add about a tablespoon of that at medium high. Uh, we're gonna try and caramelize those apples. We're gonna bake this in the oven at 350 degrees, probably anywhere between uh, 45 minutes and another hour. But these bad boys are, are cooking up nicely. We've got our chorech, and we're gonna go ahead and put that into our serving tray and so we can get it ready for the oven. So we'll put it in there for like 45 minutes and I'll show you the result when it comes out.